Yo, yo, what's good, y'all? Welcome back to Afro Wonders. It's been a minute. So, as a lot of y'all know, I moved out of the States about a year ago to the Netherlands in Europe, and it's been the best decision of my life by far. And um, I've just been coming up with a lot of different reasons why it's just a better lifestyle here, why a lot of black people should move out of America and try out a new country. It took me a long time to actually write this post and come up with the idea. First of all, I didn't know, is it too polarizing? Is it too Afrocentric? I don't know, is it unpatriotic? And then I got home about a few weeks ago and got on Instagram stories and guess what I saw? I saw a video of a cop kneeling on a black man's neck until, you know, his subsequent death. And you know the story, George Floyd, and then all the reasons why you should move out of the States, why you should give it a break, came rushing back to me, why I should write this post. You know, and I should write it because it is Afrocentric. It is polarizing and unpatriotic. I mean, I think coming up with different ways to better American citizens' lives is the most patriotic thing you can do. So with no further ado, let's go. So just a little background before I get into it. I moved out of the States about a year ago. Um, I was born and raised in Durham, North Carolina and lived there my whole life. Went to college right down the street in Raleigh, NC State. Got my ass whooped for five years getting a chemical engineering degree and a paper science engineering degree. And uh, once I got out of school, I realized how much more time I have and I could like pursue different interests. And that's when I realized I'm the kind of person that loves to do bunch of different things at the same time like at one point I was learning like parkour guitar skateboarding you know photography and just getting into hiking so you know I'm the kind of person that likes to get into a lot of different things and um, and I started doing that after school and you know photography and filmmaking were the ones that really stuck with me so at some point though a few years later I remember 2018 was just a rough year like I just had the worst creative block ever. And somebody like me, if I'm not creating, I'm dying. And I know a lot of y'all feel the same way. So um, at some point, I just made the decision. I was like, you know what? 2019, I'm out. I'm, I'm leaving the States. I don't know how I'm doing it, but I'm gonna do it. So I've had some of the ugliest realizations about my own country once I left. When you're in the bubble, you can't really see what it looks like, right? So, uh, you know, when I found that I was moving to Europe, in my head, I was like, oh man, these conversations with Europeans are gonna be like, hey, where are you from? I'm from America. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Uh, that sounds so amazing. It's abundant opportunities and it's so powerful and well-respected. That's what I was thinking that I would hear for some reason. And uh, the way a conversation really goes is like this. Anytime, like with a new person or most of the time, Hey, where are you from? From America. <laughs> oh, so you like Trump? No, he's a bastard. Oh yeah, but he's funny though. That Trump guy's funny, you're president. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you like guns, right? You got Americans like to shoot guns? All right, I'm gonna stop this conversation before I catch an attitude. But too often that's how the conversations go. Like our political, situation is a circus to the rest of the world. Like they laugh at it. And the fact that anybody can get a gun, uh, it's, it's, it's a laughing stock around the world. It really is. <laughs> so as you all know, America is one of the most developed nations around the world. One of the richest, most powerful, strongest military, but it lacks in a lot of areas compared to other developed nations. Um, first one being the justice system. It's completely jacked up on every level. So I was talking to a friend of mine, a colleague, Rui, Portuguese dude, what up Rui? And it, we had a really interesting conversation. It was during the George Floyd protests when everybody around the world is now seeing this. Um, and 
It was really interesting because I got a good perspective on how people see America and how they're seeing this specific scenario situation going down. And yeah, my boy Ru was just like, yeah, man, so I grew up my whole life. A lot of us just grew up thinking of the president of the United States as the leader of the free world, which, you know, we spread that. But now it's like, okay, I'm grown up. Now I'm seeing this all in video and it seemed like a perfect society, but now there was this like racist cloud of dust that you couldn't see and now a light's being shown on it. And now you can see it all. The whole world can see you, America, for what it is and the criminal justice system for how jacked up it is. So it's really interesting to see this from the outside looking in, not being in America when all these protests are going on. Many high profile police brutality cases have been caught online on video and it's terrifying. But the worst part is, you know, there are so many more cases than that that aren't on camera. The ones that are covered up these officers that do commit these crimes are never tried in court. They're never convicted. They're not even charged. At worst, they get a suspension without pay, administrative leave, or really, really at worst, they're fired. Woo. But none of them ever have to face the real consequences of their actions. And, uh, you know, it goes all the way up. You know, it's not even over there. That's not where it ends. So all of the laws in America, you know, I grew up, we all grew up thinking like, it's to protect us. It's to keep the order so that we have these guidelines that all match certain values that the country has. But it's a lot, like a lot of these laws that we have are in place to promote certain ideals and suppress others. And it's not always value based. It's not moral, morally based. A lot of it is money obligated. It's about who, how can we benefit what we're doing? For instance, America was built off of tobacco, right? Cigarettes, tobacco, nicotine, all that is the lead, one of the leading causes of death in America is lung cancer. And that's like our leading crop. You're legal, you, you can smoke as soon as you turn 18 and that wasn't even a law that long ago. So. On the other hand, something like marijuana, it doesn't cause those same things. It doesn't have the same level of addiction as something like cigarettes, but that's been federally illegal forever. People have been getting arrested for this, predominantly black people, just for having possession of weed. And they were on trafficking charges or possession charges. Colorado legalized it and has made it a multi-billion dollar business doing the same thing that they were doing, but they're in jail. They're still in jail while this side is making billions of dollars off of the same thing. That's not okay. That's not okay. So the issues with the law doesn't just end there. We also have the environmental laws, which America has shown no regard for, especially at the federal level, because they are funded so heavily by these oil and gas companies, which are horrible for the environment, but they don't want to upset their billion dollar buddies. I'm in the Netherlands now and I see how the government works so hard to make it easy, make like to just to reduce that environmental burden on the world. For instance, the Netherlands is a huge biking country. Their biking culture is like no other I've seen. I've heard only Copenhagen rivals it in Denmark, and that's just one city. The whole country, they've created the infrastructure just for biking. Like anywhere you go, it's always bike accessible. If you go up some stairs, there's always a ramp right next to it. Every car lane has a bike lane right next to it with a median in between, so they're not connected, so you have, you're have you safe. You might think, oh, biking, I mean, that's on the citizens. That's not the country, that's not the government's job. But leaving America made me realize like the government's job is to make it easy for the citizens to contribute. If they built the infrastructure that made it simpler, they incentivize people to do something like biking or recycling. That's the government's job. And that brings us to the work life balance. If you live in America, you know what that's about. Work, 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 work. If I need a disconnect from work, 
if I'm just so tired and burnt out, but I don't want to look lazy in front of my employer, if I want that promotion, fuck that. I gotta work even harder. I ain't taking vacation. And that's where we fuck up. <laughs> look, I mean, I get it. It's cool if like you're really passionate about your job. For those people, it doesn't even feel like work. They just, even if you might get burnt out, at least you're enjoying the process. But there are so many people, probably majority of people in America that are just doing their job just to make money. But they get stuck in that cycle because they see the whole work environment in the States is, um, you know, put work over life. And I realized that once I left, I'm still with an American company, so I still see all that. But um, I see other people. I've met other people that don't work for America, that work for Dutch companies or European companies. And they'll have Fridays off for like half days every Friday. They never stay after five. Like, and the craziest thing is their vacation. They come into it like 20 days is the minimum. So that's four weeks of vacation is the minimum by law that you can get. On average, Dutch people, different European countries get 25 to 30 holidays, paid vacation days. In the States, the average is 10 days. That's two weeks, 10 days out of every year. That's the average. They don't really care about the employees in the States. That's a problem. The student debt crisis in America is debilitating. Like it's killing American college graduates. They're starting out at lower levels than people that didn't go to school decades ago. You know what I mean? Like those people at least had a net worth of zero when they started. People are coming out of college with like $50,000 worth of debt and they gotta work, dig themselves out of the hole. What kind of incentive is that to go to school and get a higher education? And um, it just shouldn't be that way. There should be some kind of relief program going on right now. And what I found out in the Netherlands, there are people who you go to school, you pay your way through and when you're done, the school actually pays you back incrementally. I have a friend that went to Delft University and she's getting paid back over time. All the money that she spent to go to school is getting paid back to her. That's a foreign concept to me. I'm like, why, why, why would they do that? Oh, cause it's the right thing to do. Okay, I didn't know. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, that's the way it should be. It should be a free education system or, or like something like that. It shouldn't be you paying them and then you paying them again. Like, it doesn't make sense. It should be that way. You pay them and they pay you back. And you get an education, you pay them through working for the company, for the, through the government. And you know, you build up the economy that way, as opposed to through debt, through debilitating yourself, the your credit system, which is also messed up. So the best part about leaving America, honestly, are the people. And it's not that the people outside of America are better than Americans. It's not the case. But it's a lot more diversity when you talk to people. You know, you can be taking a train and you might be on a train with somebody from Italy, Switzerland, France, and Germany all at the same time. And you can start a random conversation with them and you just never know what you're gonna get. It's like digging into a box of chocolates. And once you hear that accent, you're like, oh yeah, I know where you're from. But it's so cool, you know, in the States, you know, it might be a generalization, but live in the South, grew up in North Carolina. If I talk to somebody, then I generally know what they're gonna be, what they're gonna sound like, what their thoughts are. And like I said, it's a stereotype, it's a generalization, and, but that's just the way we think in America because we grew up there. Leaving America kind of gives you that clean slate, just wipes it clean. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing to not have to think about those things, those things that are so ingrained in us, embedded us from birth. So moving out of the States as a black person, specifically in Europe, that's what I can speak to, people are generally really interested in you or just what you're about, where you're from, and just who you are, what you think about the world. Like people, it's just a different perspective, a black America perspective is unique around the world because there aren't that many of us traveling all over. There are black people, there are people from Africa, a lot of in Europe, but black Americans specifically, not prevalent throughout the world, mostly in America. 
nature side of the lifestyle here and the people, the way that they enjoy life is done in a way that I can really appreciate. It's not done that way in the States, at least not where I'm from, North Carolina. You know, the way that they live, they just like grab a picnic blanket, get some food and drinks, and they'll just lay out on a canal, on some grass, anywhere you can find a park. It's always littered with people. So uh, people bike everywhere that they go, as we talked about before, just to commute or just to ride for fun. It's really important to see because you don't understand the way that you're living currently in the States or the way that the environment kind of pushes you to live until you leave. About a year ago, I was extremely stressed. I felt like my life was so stagnant. I told you I had the supreme creative block and I just needed to get out and I did it, it was risky. I didn't know what was gonna come of it, but it was the best decision I've made. And that's why I stress the importance of, if you feel that inside, if you feel like you're in that rut and you're just tired of your environment, it's an option and it's a significant option to consider to leave the States. I was pursuing um, to teach English as a foreign language. It's a commodity that we all are. Everybody that's from America that can speak English, especially as a first language, it doesn't even have to be a first language. There are places all over the world that demand that. It's demanded all over the world. Some places pay really well for it. Some places pay like a normal teacher, but you'd be able to live in a new country and have a secure job while you do it. I got certified to teach English when I realized, or when I got the idea, the feeling that my company wasn't gonna provide me the opportunity to move out. So I did it through this company, the International TEFL Academy. TEFL is teaching with English as a foreign language. And I got certified and I was gonna to move to Colombia and all that was set up, I accepted. And then my job came with the right opportunity. I was like, all right, damn, Colombia, I'll catch you on the next one. But that's a very um, viable option. I think everybody should consider that. If you don't know what you wanna do, just look into it. Um, I'll put the link in the description below. Hit me up if you want to know more, different ways to do it and what it's actually like the process or if you just have any questions about any of this in general you know just hit me up and uh yeah man, i hope y'all enjoyed all this if you did definitely like subscribe share with somebody that could use it let's keep this thing going but yeah man until next time i'm gonna catch y'all peace